Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey as um, a female designer now turned entrepreneur um, and my kind of commitment to creating a generation of digital creators. So my story starts in an unlikely place. Uh, about three years ago, my husband and I found a laptop in our trash can. And as you can imagine, it was this kind of bizarre moment where we realized that someone had just thrown away this incredibly valuable piece of technology because they just didn't understand it or just didn't want it. Um, and this began a very critical dialogue between us around this lack of relationship that we seem to have around technology. We don't really understand it, but we absolutely don't really know how to create things or produce things with it. They're not really designed for us to do that. They're these closed systems that don't want us to build with them or invent with them or fix them or modify them. Um, and so we continue to kind of explore this area um, and uh, very soon after that um, situation we had a child um, who's right there um, but after having a child and I don't know how many people have, have a child but having a child born with a tablet is a really interesting experience um, parenting in the digital age is very different than I think parenting in other generations um, as a mom I really wanted my son to be completely digitally literate but I also wanted him to be able to see see technology as something that he could create with, a medium to build like Lego, a medium to create with like blocks, not just this kind of consumptive space. Um, and kids are born fearless. For them, making sensors and making cookies is the same thing. They just want to make and create, and at every stage of their development, they're learning. Um, and that was a really important um, kind of part of this development for us. So we fundamentally believe that kids are super smart and that the industry which is most a part of their lives as they're growing up is toys and we think that those toys should really be smarter too. Um, as we continued to kind of explore this area, um, we began to really understand the kind of micro and macro kind of things that were leading um, in this space. So when you ask kids today what they want to be when they grow up, 65% of kids in primary school today will have jobs that don't exist, which is amazing. And those jobs will absolutely be digitally creative jobs. So how do we as parents and educators support that journey to inventing kind of jobs of the future? So we started by creating an organization um, that has a very specific purpose, um, and the purpose is around essentially um, helping kids spark their imagination with hands-on tech. Um, and the reason we talk about sparking imagination is because we think no two kids are the same. Um, kids will get excited about very different things, and so we want to give them that opportunity to get hands-on and to create, invent, code, play with technology in a productive way. Um, we imagine a world where kids are building and creating technology themselves, where they're building um, solar plant thirst detectors with pencils that have servos and water balloons that water their plants automatically, where they're essentially learning about circuits by creating conductive Play-Doh in their kitchens that conduct electricity to light up LEDs, to make motors spin, to make buzzers buzz, and really bring creations to life. We see a world where kids actually use sensors and lights to invent games because they want to, because they have the capacity to do that, and because they have the tools accessible to them to do that, where they're using electronics and cardboard um, to invent speakers and sound instruments, again, because they have them at their disposal and they have the confidence to be able to use them and where parents don't see tech as something that's scary, but rather as a medium where their kids can create, where they can be a part of that process, and where they can actually have quality time using technology. Um, and so this world that we're kind of imagining is not something that we've just invented. It's actually really built on some very important scientific um, and educational methods and philosophies. So we're really standing on the shoulders of some kind of giants that have really developed these kind of principles. And one of the first ones that is a real inspiration to the approach that we've taken is um, Jean Paget. So Jean Paget is a scientist from Switzerland, and his area of research and exploration is very much about brain development. He believes that kids um, between the ages of 2 and 11 are developing their brains in a really fundamental way. And the way brains are getting developed is through learning by doing. That this process of learning by exploring and failing and learning and 
and applying those processes is just fundamental to kids um, incorporating something called mastery. So this is where you learn a skill, you're able to apply it again and repeat it. And really that repetition of mastery is fundamental to kids developing those parts of their brains at early ages. The other person that we really um, have informed a lot of our work is uh, Seymour Papert. Seymour Papert was a mathematician at MIT um, and a computer scientist, focused very much on artificial intelligence and created a programming language called Logo, um, which was one of the first programming languages that, that young people began to really develop. And he believed that kids learn really differently than adults and that they need more complex systems and tools to really help them to explore technology specifically. And that learning technology is actually really different than learning other things. It's not about I'm right or I'm wrong. It's it's actually about debugging and problem solving. When you're programming, if something doesn't work, the, the idea of getting to the next stage is, is it fixable? Can I actually solve that problem? Which now is known as essentially um, uh, complex problem solving, which is a really important part of our kind of method. And then the last individual that we really um, kind of focus on a lot is Maria Montessori, who was very dedicated to um, young people being independent thinkers. Um, in the Montessori method, they give young people small versions of adult things, um, and they ask them to really find independence and individuality in using real, everyday materials and products. And that sense of individuality is really important. It's about kids discovering inside and outside using real tools um, to find their own agency agency, um, and that's a really important part of our kind of philosophy and, and approach. And so these kinds of philosophies um, informed us to really, I guess you could say, kind of disrupt an area. Um, so the toy department, it looks something like this still. Um, it's a very gender split space. It's very much led by characters and by kind of um, products that are informing young people, whether the industry um, celebrates that or not, they are informing the way young people are forming a sense of self, the way they learn, the way they want to learn, the things they think they're good at, the things they think they're bad at. And this industry, we think, has a lot more responsibility to play in how kids interact with technology. And so what we've created is a category. It's a category where kids actually make, play, code, and invent their own toys. Um, and these toys, um, we've, we've built a team around it. So we have 30 people in Hackney um, that are really passionately helping us build this business. Um, the organization has inspired um, tens of thousands of kids in over 97 countries to build things like gaming devices, where they have to make, play, code, and invent their own games, um, to build synthesizers out of cardboard boxes that, it, that the actual product comes in. Um, teachers and educators are using it globally to use as part of curriculum and also informal education. And again, this kind of learning by doing and this understanding of technology through exploring and creativity is just fundamental to the way we think kids will understand a sense of self, they'll build confidence, and they'll find the thing within technology that they really believe in, that they're really empowered by, and that they might want to use in future explorations to hopefully make better decisions as they grow and as they um, find their passions. Um, a really important part of our process, which I think is very much rooted in kind of my background, is um, our user-centered approach to design. So for us, design is about putting um, the user, in our case, the young person, at the center of our design process. So we do big research projects to understand when y what young people are making in school already, what they like making, and we use those as themes. And young people are part of this very iterative process of developing and creating products. So we don't start with the end product. We start with an idea or an area or a theme, and young people actually help us to define the end result of what the product might be, which is really exciting. Um, we do home testing, we do a lot of testing in schools, um, and we have a little group called the Future Inventors Club, which is about 100 kids in the UK um, that essentially volunteer to come in and just test products with us, which is really fun. Um, we've built some really amazing partnerships with um, retailers, um, schools, um, education businesses, as well as businesses like the BBC. So we did our first co-created um, product together with the BBC, um, and the product is very much in response to something that existed in the 80s. So this um, kind of beige tool is something called the Micro. Um, and the Micro was the first personal computer that 80% of all schools had. Um, it really sparked a generation of engineers. 
years. And so the premise that the BBC essentially asked us to participate in is, what does a micro for this generation look like? Um, and this little device that I'm wearing, and this one on the screen, is the BBC Micro Bit, which is the micro for this generation. It's a pocket-sized computer, um, kind of like a Swiss Army knife for invention. It has a screen that you can program. It has buttons that you can program for gaming and controlling. It has Bluetooth that you can use for Internet of Things projects. It has an accelerometer for motion and tracking. It has a compass so you can place yourself. And it has an edge connector so you can connect it to Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, all different kinds of other things in the world. Um, this product has been given to a million 12-year-olds in the UK for free, which is just an incredibly ambitious project that the BBC um, um, and, and we and a bunch of other partners um, participated in. It's now being used by young people all over the UK to learn computer science and to learn about digital creativity. And kids, as you can imagine, are inventing stuff with it. They're inventing Tamagotchis. They're inventing electronic football pitches and baseball pitches. They're inventing crazy golf robots. Um, and again, they're doing this not because they necessarily want to learn programming. They're doing it because they want to create awesome things that are interesting and do fun and engaging activities. Um, and the last product that I'm going to talk about, which again is a really a manifestation of these philosophies um, and this commitment to empowering kind of digital creators, not just producers, is a, an object that we just created a couple of months ago called the Mover Kit. Um, and the Mover Kit is a wearable that kids essentially make and code themselves. It has eight rainbow LEDs, a motion sensor, and a compass that kids can invent and create with. And our philosophy is around, like, right out of the box, you build your own tech. Um, and then you essentially use digital tools to empower creation, coding, craft, all of these activities happen in a digital space. Um, and kids have created all kinds of amazing things. So they actually can go through different craft materials and, and, and kind of recipes that other kids have made. Um, in this case, a little girl got a mover kit and she had a um, remote control car that she wanted to turn into a police car. So she programmed the LED lights to basically flash red and blue and it responded to motion and the faster her remote control car went, the faster the lights would flash. And and again, she programmed this in a couple of minutes, and the reason she wanted to do this, well, not necessarily because she wanted to learn programming, is because she wanted to have fun, she wanted to play. And we really want to see programming and electronics and this kind of relationship to tech to be a part of everyday play and activities. Because I think when you're playing, that's when you're really discovering what you love and the passions you have. Um, other things that kids have created are things like the toothbrush trainer. So um, a little boy has arguments with his mom around brushing his teeth, and the, when he brushes his for two minutes, the mover essentially um, detects the movement, and then it essentially unleashes rainbow lights. Um, a little girl wanted to be Iron Woman. She wanted to attach to her costume. So the faster she ran, the more it sparkled like white and pink lights. Um, you can also use the accelerometer to turn it into a bike light. So front light is one way. Uh, backlight is the other way. Um, you can do scooter, scooter speed distance challenges where you can actually race each other. We've had kids turn it into dice where you like spin it and it shows kind of where the person is next that has to play the game. So again, again this kind of unlimited inventiveness that happens when you actually give kids tech to play and invent with is just an incredibly empowering um, process that we've been able to be a part of and also kind of observe and move to the next level. Um, and I think fundamentally, we are just really excited and I'm really excited about what a generation looks like when you really empower them with technology to not only invent their future, but the future that we're all essentially going to be a part of. Um, and I think that's a really exciting place to spend time. Um, and that's why we've essentially built a business around it. Um, and we're really excited about the next stage of how kids are going to use technology. That's it. <laughs>